Alright, the first descenders, there's a brand new update about the new technical playtest that's going to be happening this weekend and they've just updated us on all the brand new information about what we're going to experience in this update and what's new and let's just go straight into it and see exactly what's going on and what they've been working on. So first of all is the final technical test basic information. The number one is the test schedule. Here you can see the map and this is when the playtest will be available. For me, it starts on the May 25th and it's going to end on May 27th which is pretty decent, about two days worth of gameplay and uh, the game should be dropping out in just a couple of months here. Really not that far at all, considering this playtest is just to basically get some information back. For the second is the supported platforms is Steam and that's about it. Please note that this test is solely on PC platform for technical verification purposes. Number three is the supported languages. Obviously, we have in-game languages, 12 in total. Korean, English, Japanese, simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, French, German, Spanish, Spain, Portuguese, Brazil, Italian, Polish, and Russian. Voice languages only supports two languages, that's Korean and English. How to participate. The test is an open test available for anyone to play via the Steam platform during the test period. Number five is the pre-download instructions. Pre-download is available one day before the test starts, which is going to be the May 24th. And here you can see the PC requirements. If you do not have the best computer, if you are maybe wondering what you need to play this game, there you go. You need at least a 2060 recommended and an i7-7700K for the recommended specs. But it shouldn't be too difficult to run. Pretty much a lot of people have these specs if you are mainly a PC gamer anyway. I'm running about a 3070 Ti, so I should be good. The technical issues. The Intel CPU issue is also a problem. Crashes have been reported on some Intel 13 and 14 gen CPUs. Um, some PCs using these CPUs experience a forced shutdown of the game with the error message out of memory upon game launch. This can be partially resolved by setting power limits in the BIOS. This issue has been reported to Intel, which is great. I don't know why that is. It's very, very strange. Hopefully that does actually get fixed before the game releases, because that's an issue, a big one. In-game support information. During the test period, we will provide Calibre currency and modules to support smooth testing and allow you to experience newly added in-game store items. Detailed in-game support details will be provided in separate notice. So you can pretty much experience all the in-game items um, right off the bat. You don't have to wait. You don't have to buy anything with real money. They're going to give you everything. All right, the brand new contents. What are we going to experience? We would like to introduce some of the content supported during this test period and some of the newly added major contents. Okay, the final te uh, technical test contents, the May 25th to the 26th, um, 11 standard characters, two ultimate characters. Two fields, Kingston and Sterile Lands. The new content is the Encrypted Vault, the Void Fragment and Fusion Reactor, the Vulgus Recon Outpost, and the Endgame Support Final Technical Test Limited is 40 plus modules, 50 million gold, and 4.5 million cupia shards, which is obviously going to get you that in store items for you to test out. The Weapon Readjustments. The Weapon Readjustments is a feature that changes weapon options for rare weapons and above to efficiently match the Descendants' preferences, which is pretty damn cool. I'm actually really, really excited that they've actually added that into the game. So just a bit of information about what that actually is. Weapon Readjustments is available after achieving Mastery Rank 4 and can be conducted at the workshop in Albion and each zone camp. The locations of these workbenches can be checked at each zone camp in Albion using M, current region, and F1 legend to find the workbench, that's the symbol for its locations. Weapon readjustments consumes readjustments materials, adjustments control axes, and gold for common to rare weapons, and fine tuning control axes, and gold for ultimate weapons. Additionally, when changing options, you can lock options that you do not wish to change. Locking options will consume more materials. When performing weapon readjustments, the option and values are then applied probatistically and uh, can be checked through the readjustments options on the left. So that's pretty cool that you can actually lock certain things about the weapon and the armor that you want to keep and um, change everything else, which is pretty cool because I don't want to miss out on um, pretty good um, abilities on those weapons. If I do want to keep them, I can. I just have to pay more. Next up are our Void Fragments. Void Fragments are newly added field content placed throughout each zone. 
Each Void Fragment has an attribute indicated and they can only be destroyed using descendant skills that match their attributes. Fire attacks do not deal any damage. Uh, firearm attacks do not deal any damage. Okay, this is pretty cool. Um, if a Void Fragment is already being engaged by another descendant, you can join the quest by entering the arena around the void fragment however if you do not use the descendant with the matching attributes you will only receive the basic reward and not the conditional reward so make sure you do join with that right attribute if you do want the final rewards while perform while progressing with void fragments you can obtain various types of void shards which can be used in the void fusion reactor the reward and attribute information for void fragments in each region can be checked by going to g the world map selected the desired zone hovering over the void fragments icon and that's what it looks like right there this is the void mission and obviously you do need a void fragment um destroyed by void fragments and it's more or less the playtime for this is about five minutes or less so you can complete it semi quick and obviously you do have the legion of darkness a monster at level seven which is the i'm guessing boss for this mission and finally, we do have the Void Fusion Reactor, some more information about that. The Void Fusion Reactor newly added field content along with the Void Fragments is placed throughout each zone. Each Void Fusion Reactor indicates the type and quantity of Void Shards needed and you can summon monsters by meeting these requirements, which is pretty cool actually. When defeating these summoned monsters, if you possess all the required Void Shards, you will also receive additional rewards and the Void Shards will be automatically consumed. Descendants who do not possess Void Shards can still help defeat the monsters near the Void Fusion Reactor to receive basic rewards, which is pretty good. You also do get an incentive to play these things. The reward and required types of quantities of fragments for each Void Fusion Reactor can be checked by going to G, which is the world map once again, selecting the desired zone, hovering over the Void Fusion Reactor icon. And that's obviously what it looks like. So you can see all your main rewards that you're going to be getting and um, the required shards that you need. And that is pretty much it. It's actually pretty cool. I'm really, really excited for all the things that they have given us for this playtest. Even though that's two days, we still have a lot to do. And obviously you can replay a bunch of different characters to test out 11 standard characters and two ultimate characters in just two days, which is pretty cool. You do have a lot of, um, uh, you know stuff to buy from the store with the money that they're going to give you and the equipment they're going to give you you have two fields to try out you have new content to try out it's a lot just for being a quick test before the release which is honestly i'm really really excited for it i'm going to get downloading the beta as soon as possible which is um the friday i'm going to get that downloaded as soon as i can anyway I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments what you are excited for about the test and if you're excited for the full release. I sure am and I cannot wait. I'll see you all very soon.